Hey guys, what's up? This is Aaron. Uh, last week I kind of showed you guys how to build a, the exterior of a simple house. This week I'm going to be showing you how to do the inside of a house and how to properly lay out a house. So if you want to lay out a house, you can sort of just wing it and make one up if you want. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm actually going to base it off of a blueprint. So I'm going to go in and uh, import my blueprint here. Now something you should know when you're importing a texture is over here. Um, use as image and use as texture. If I select use as texture, this will become a paintable object. If I import it as an image, which is what I'm going to do, it becomes its own entity. So I'll just scale it to here like this. And now you'll see that this is sort of its own its own object rather than just a texture. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, as you can see, the house is 42 feet long. So I'm just going to draw a line. Get my line tool here. I'll draw a line. Type in 42 feet. And then that's the actual length of the house. So I'm just going to scale this now using the scale tool, which is over here. Okay, so once you have your blueprint scaled, I'm going to go ahead and explode it. And I'll make it into a group. And then this way, I can lock it. And then you'll see the bounding box then becomes red. This prevents me from being able to move this. So now what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start drawing the actual layout of the house. So I'll just start drawing here. See it snaps to 42 feet. And then the length of the house is 26 foot 10. So I'll type that in, 26 foot 10. There we go. I'll draw another line here. And then it fills so you can tell that uh, all the lines are on the same plane. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the, the offset tool and I'm going to bring this in six inches because uh, most exterior walls are six inches. And now I have two sets of lines here. So now I'm going to start drawing interior walls as well. Uh, most interior walls are four inches. Uh, some are different but most are four so I'm going to go with four. As you can see the lines are really blurry so it's kind of hard to tell where they're actually supposed to be. Um, so I'm just going to guess, but for any actual high caliber jobs, uh, you can use the measurements and, and uh, as you can see here, a lot of blueprints have measurements written on them, so you could use the tape measure tool and make it super accurate. And then you also get areas where there are a lot of broken pieces of wall, so like this wall continues to here, to here, and here, goes all the way to the other side of the house. So I'm, what I'm going to do is just make sure that they're all on the same line, is go from the existing line that I already have drawn, and then I'll just bring this all the way to the other side of the house. And then I'll do this for, uh, for this line as well. Then you can continue to break up the wall just using the eraser tool. So I'll just do this. Doing stuff this way is obviously very time consuming, but compared to um, actually just trying to lay out the blueprint inside SketchUp, it's uh, actually not that long. If you're doing a lot of blueprint layout and, and stuff like this, you're going to want to familiarize yourself with uh, a lot of the shortcuts. So if you want to use the eraser tool, it's, um, E is the shortcut. If you want to use the line tool, is L. Uh, the tape measure tool is T. They're, they're pretty straightforward, honestly. It's either the first letter or something like that for the shortcut. So when you get to the windows and doors in your model, um, just you can just put down some lines just to indicate where they are. I'm using my tape measure tool here. Measure the length of the window. It's about four foot nine, so I'll put that there. And then I have another window that starts here, so I'll draw another line here. I can measure out um, four foot nine. So now that I have all the walls of my blueprint drawn, I'm going to unlock my blueprint and I'm going to hide it so that it doesn't show up and doesn't interfere with what I'm doing. So now you can see all the lines I have drawn. All the doors and windows are indicated as well. So I'm going to just uh, complete my floor like that. Fill in the square. So now I'm going to push and pull the walls that I have brought up here. But I also have a deck which I'm going to bring up about one or two feet. So I'm just going to bring up my wall about ten feet so I can sort of compensate for that. I'll just push and pull each wall and I can inference with the other wall. So if I put this on any other face that's at that same height, it will match it. So it saves me from having to type in measurements over and over and over again. So now all my walls are brought up. And I'm actually going to bring up my windows and door areas as well, but I'm going to reverse the face so I know where they need to be placed. So now I have all my windows and doors selected. I'm going to bring up these exterior columns. I'll match these with the uh, top of the house. 
So now I'll bring my deck up one foot six. And I'll bring up the floor inside the house that that same height as well. So I'll type in one foot six. So now the deck and the interior floor are at the same height. And now I'm going to measure my door. So I'm just going to reverse the face because I know this is the door. And I'll just type in seven foot two because I think that's average door height. That I erase my lines and guide and type in six inches. Now I can erase this as well. So now I have my door to the front of my house. So now I'm going to do the same for my windows as well. And I'm going to bring up a guide here about 36 inches, we'll say. And I'm going to reverse all the faces. Like that. And I'll draw a line across each uh, window section. Now the windows on this particular house, I want them to be the same height as the door, so I'll do that as well. Draw lines across, and I'll push each one in six inches again because that's the thickness of the wall. And there, now we sort of have the uh, the front of the house figured out. Now, because the back of the house doesn't have a deck and the front of the house does, 36 inches isn't obviously going to be the same window height. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a guide up to here, like this. Bring one up on this side, match the guide, and now I can bring one up on the back of the house. So now I'll reverse all these faces. Well, I'll bring a guide up from the bottom of the deck so that I know where the bottom of the door is going to be. About there. And then I'll do another guide down from the top. Like that. So once you have all your walls pulled up and your windows and doors knocked out, you can get into layers. And I have that over here. But if you don't have layers on your screen already, you can go view toolbars. And uh, here this will toggle this um, toolbar on and off. So by default you have layer 0 and you really don't want to fool around with layer 0. SketchUp doesn't like when you fool around with it. Um, so I'm just going to leave that as is now. I'll insert another layer. I'll call this one um, main floor. And what I'll do now is I'll highlight everything I have drawn and I'll go up to here where it says layer. And you can turn this on and off as well over in toolbars. And I'll select main floor. So now everything that I have selected here is on the main floor. I can toggle is on and off. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight everything that's on the main floor layer again and I'm going to hit uh, group and I'll call this main floor. So now I can go to my roof layer and I'll just draw a rectangle where the roof is going to be. Now by default what you draw will be on layer 0. It won't be on the layer that you have selected. So if I want to make this beyond the roof layer all I have to do is go up here again click on roof. So now I can turn this on and off. So this is really useful if you want to still have a roof on your house, but you also want to sort of decorate the inside of it. You want to put chairs inside, you want to put paintings or whatever. So all you have to do is uh, hit visible over here and it will turn the roof layer on and off. You can do the same with the main floor as well. Um, but for now this isn't really much of a roof, so I'm going to actually lock the main floor layer, so it'll prevent me from moving that. And now I'm going to extend my roof out a little bit here. Just draw this. So I'm going to bring this up six inches, and I'll offset this one foot, and I'll bring up this outside piece another six inches. Draw a line across to connect. Let's erase my corner lines here so I can push and pull the surface as a whole. And I'll draw a line across center, select my line, go to the move tool and hit alt. I can bring that up a couple of feet. Now I actually don't want this entire end face to be sticking out like this so I'm going to use uh, my inferencing again. Get on my end, my edge there, like that. Now I can erase these lines like that and push this in until it aligns with the face on the other side. And now I can do that on the other side of the house. There, now we sort of have a uh, basic house layout. I'm going to add some steps here as well. Now I can go into the component, erase these lines. Draw some lines here like this. And I want to divide this into three. And this is one foot six, so I can just separate this into six inch increments. I'll pull this one out eight inches. Do the same thing down here, another eight inches like that. Erase my lines. 
now I have some steps on the front of my house. I can also push and pull these as well if I want them to sort of wrap around the columns. I'll bring them out another six inches like that. I'll also do the same thing over here for the uh, the back door. 24 inches, 16 inches, and 8 inches. So now our house is starting to look like something. We haven't really gotten to the interior yet, but now we're getting to that. So I'm just going to hide my layers. So now I'm going to fill in my windows. And while I was making the windows, of course, I remember that I have a window that's three by th uh, three foot five, and a window that is four foot nine. So I'm just going to go over here, and I'll uh, draw out a rectangle that's four foot nine by six, because that's the interior wall size. And I'll draw out another rectangle that's uh, three foot five by six. So I can just push and pull this four foot two. And I'll push and pull this one four foot two as well. And I'll just bring these in 1.5 inches. You also want to keep in mind that it's not just the outside of the window that's going to be showing, it's also the inside of the window. So I'm going to use the offset tool again on the inside. Now we want to add a little lip to the inside of the window frame, so I'm going to go in with the offset tool again. I'll make it 0.5 inches. So now we have basic frames for our window, so I'm just going to group this. And I'll say window 3 foot 5. Do the same for this one as well, triple click. So say for example these components get deleted, and this goes for all components. If I want to access them later or bring in multiple copies, I can just go window components and click on this button to make sure that you're in model. And you can see that my window 3 foot 5 and 4 foot 9 are still there. And I can just drag these back into the model like this. So now I'm going to add a little bit of extra design to the windows, so I'm going to go to my center point here. So now I'm going to go into my guides, and I'll use my rectangle tool, like this. So now I have all my lines drawn, I'll just go over here and delete my guides. Of course you don't need to make your own windows, if you want to just uh, find some windows on the warehouse you can do that as well. But if you want custom windows, 9 chances out of 10 you're going to have to do it yourself. So what I'm going to do now, so I'm just going to uh, break these apart, and I'm going to push all my squares through the window like that, so that they line up on the other side. So now we have our windows, they're the same on both sides, but because the windows are 6 inches thick, they're going to be the same thickness as the wall, so I'm actually going to bring these out a little bit, bring them out 0.5 on both sides like this. And I actually don't want the inside part of the frame to be the same thickness as the outside molding as well. So I'm going to bring these in 2.5 inches, like that. Now I can erase all these lines. And now of course I want to put glass in these windows. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a line up from here until I meet the corner. Or the bottom right. Like that. Now I can take my rectangle tool. I'll drag it up to here and it'll fill in most of these. If it doesn't you can just uh, drag lines around. So now I have my windows filled in, but I don't want the glass to be sitting on the actual outside of these uh, crossing pieces. So I'm just going to push this in because I know the frame is an inch thick, I'm going to push it in a half an inch. Of course you don't need to go as detailed, but the more complicated and the more sophisticated the object, the uh, easier it is to make it look realistic. So now I have all my windows pushed in. And I'm going to take my paint bucket, pick a color, paint at least one square so I can change the hue of it. I'll change the opacity. And one thing you'll notice about reverse faces is that while the front face is technically transparent, and as you can see I can see the house through it, you can paint the reverse face a completely different color, which isn't transparent at all. So you want to keep in mind that when you're painting surfaces, the front face may be different than the reverse face. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to group my windows again, and I'll call this window 3 foot 5. It'll ask me if I want to replace it, because it's an updated version of the same thing, I will hit yes. Do the same thing for over here. So now that I have my windows made, I can make copies of these to put in the house. So what you can do is I'll just take my, so I'll just highlight it, switch to the move tool, and then I can press control and you get this little plus symbol come up. So I'll just click at a point, and then I'll just drag it to another point on the house, like that. 
And because I have a half inch overhang, I'll move it out on the uh, green axis here, 0.5, like that. And I can move this same thing, same system, over to here, like that. So components, of course, make it really easy to make multiple objects of really sophisticated objects. So I don't need to redraw an entire window every time one, one is in the model. I can just copy it and place it elsewhere. I could also put all my windows on a separate layer if I wanted to do that. I could go up here and I'll just say windows like that. And then I'll move all of these to the windows layer. So I can turn these on and off if for whatever reason I don't want them to show up. I can do that. And I can also do the same with doors and other things like that. But now let's get more into the interior of the house. So you'll find that when you get into the inside space of a house, it's really sort of congested. You can't really see a whole lot of what you're doing. And you might and you might end up inside of a wall like this and not necessarily sure what you're looking at. So one thing you can do to sort of make this um, not as bad is you can go up to the camera uh, menu up here and go to field of view and as you can see down in the bottom corner my field of view isn't very much it's only 35 degrees so I'm going to change this to 90 degrees and you can see the the perspective shift so there's a lot more in view now another thing I can do is I can use the position camera icon over here so anywhere I click inside the models where it'll place the camera and the eye height is 7 feet right now which isn't necessarily realistic so I'm just gonna use my pan tool and move it down a little bit and I'll switch to these feet here. I'll go to the feet and it'll tell my tell me my eye height again. So four foot eight, that's reasonable. So now what I can do is click and if I drag around it will essentially walk around my house. If I use the mouse wheel I can look around. I can just click and drag and look around my house. So this makes it a lot easier to sort of decorate interior spaces. But if you find yourself not being able to get into a specific space or not being able to see the correct perspective of something, you can go back to your layers. So I'll just go outside the house here. I'll go back to my cursor. So now to see a little bit better into my house, I'm going to turn off the roof over here. So now I can see that in the house better. So if I wanted to put a chair in this room, I can just go, instead of making one, I'm going to go to the warehouse this time. Get models. And you can find pretty much anything on here. I'll just type in wooden chair. And as you can see, there's a bunch of examples that come up. I'll, uh, I'll click on this one. I'll just hit download model. And it'll ask me if I want to load it directly into my model. I'll say yes. Uh, depending on how sophisticated the object, it might take a couple of minutes. I'll put this here. And like that, I have a couple of chairs and a table in my house. I'll just go back to the SketchUp warehouse type in sofa. I'll go with this one. This one looks pretty cool. <laughs> Download model. So I can place this inside of my house. All the models that are on the warehouse are uploaded by uh, users, so they may not necessarily be accurate. So keep that in mind. So now I have a TV in my house. But you also notice that the TV is sort of floating in, in the air. And that's because when I placed it, it wasn't necessarily on the floor, or it wasn't necessarily on a line or a face. So if I want to put this object on the floor, I can move it down, but you, you kind of got to guess where the floor is. So I'm just going to take my endpoint here, and I'm going to line it up with another point inside the model that's on the floor. So now you can see it snaps to the floor face. So I'll leave it there, and I can move it around on the green and red axis, and it'll, it'll actually stay on the floor. Uh, if you want to add the tops to door frames, you can do that as well. I'll just go into this component, go down to fit, find my midpoint, and I'll bring this up 7.2. Now I can push and pull this surface, and now I have the top of my door frame. This, of course, can be done on any number of door frames or windows, so I'll just bring this down 6 inches, sort of make it look more like a beam rather than the top of a door frame. There we go, now I can sort of walk around my house and sort of look down this hallway here looks a little tight, I can go back up to my field of view make it 70 so that's basically how you would go about uh, decorating an interior model and uh, hopefully that answers any questions you have and uh, thanks for watching